Hey up YouTube and welcome to my quick video on the 5 phases of Minecraft Legends. If you can learn these phases you'll be able to beat the game on Legendary no problem. But if you're not playing on Legendary you might not even need to use all the phases. This video will break down what you need to do and when and in the order you're going to do it. It's going to give you a rough idea of how you should be tackling your playthrough and hopefully by the end of it you'll feel a lot more confident and ready to take on some piglins. The first phase is called the preparation phase. Now we use the preparation phase to find chests, to locate the first, to find host towers. Basically in the preparation phase, it's the part before you destroy the night beacon base. Now if any time before you destroy the night beacon base, you can actually run around the world, gather as many resources as you want and build and do whatever, you can explore. So you can deal with most of the exploration achievements right off the bat before you actually get your teeth sunk into the game. So if you're playing the game for the first time on Legendary, just looking for doing one playthrough, this is the way to go. Take advantage of the preparation phase. In the True Achievements Guide with the preparation phase, we take advantage of it to build up three main villages that also have masonries, which means they have stone structures. It's also optional, but I recommend going to the other two villages and building structures out of wood. Um, so don't put masonry huts there because you're not going to be defending those villages. But at the same time, if those villagers can defend themselves for a couple of nights and buy you a little bit of extra time on the attack, you're going to appreciate it in the long run. So what happens is after you've dealt with your villagers, you've built your villagers up and stuff and you destroy the night beacon base. At that point, then we move into the invasion phase. Now the invasion phase is the main part of the game. This is where other phases are going to happen as we play, but we'll always keep coming back to the invasion phase until we're at the end game. Okay, so the invasion phase refers to when piglins can launch attacks on your villagers and this happens after the night beacon base is destroyed. So it's in the invasion phase that we go out of our way to find the firsts, host towers, all that stuff. We get all our upgrades applied. Um, there's a few achievements you can grab here and there in the invasion phase. I'll probably do little guides for them on YouTube. But if you want to see the full list of the achievements in the invasion phase, or you want a complete breakdown of the invasion phase, then please go over to True Achievements and check out the full written guide to complement these videos. So what's going to happen with the invasion phase is that piglins are going to come and they're going to attack your villagers. Now, we could defend every village on the map and that wouldn't be a problem, but the game would take an awful lot longer to play and we wouldn't be getting achievements while we do this. So instead of defending every single village, which can be exhausting and time consuming, we're just going to focus on three villages in particular. Now, in your legendary playthrough, multiple villages can get attacked at once. But by using main village choke points on different ends of the map, the chances of those main villagers being attacked at the same time is severely reduced. The main rule you have to remember is, if it's not a main village, you can leave it and keep attacking or doing whatever you're doing. But if a lesser village or homestead falls overnight, if the piglins destroy a village, you need to go back to that village and repair it using carpenter huts before the next day starts or before the next night comes because otherwise what's going to happen is they're eventually going to destroy all of your villages to the point where all the work we put into the main villages will be irrelevant and we don't want that because later on in the game in the assault phases we actually use our main villages to help defeat bosses okay but you'll see all that as part of the bigger picture as time goes on for now, in the invasion phase, just remember, do not go and save homesteads or lesser villages. Just focus on your main villages that have the masonries there. You can also add kaboomeries, redstone launchers, and battle drums, spyglass overlooks. There's lots of things you can add to your village in the invasion phase using more advanced resources like coal, diamond, and redstone to increase the firepower of your main villages. I would just be careful because farming for these resources and actually building the things shouldn't be a job on its own. It should come when the village has been attacked. So don't go out your way spending all day reinforcing a village 
just go and add things to that village when the village is actually being attacked or just before the village is being attacked because otherwise you're again wasting time trying to reinforce your main villages with things that we could do on the spot when we get there that literally don't take long so that's pretty much a rundown of the invasion phase the invasion phase obviously is a bit wordier because it is the main portion of the game um between the invasion phase you're going to have three individual assault phases so there's an assault phase for the horde of the spore there's an assault phase for the horde of the bastion and there's an assault phase for the horde of the hunt and those are the orders we defeat the bosses in they're the orders that we defeat them in and you're going to ask me why and that's a perfectly reasonable question when it comes to the assault phases right off the bat the first people we want to target is horde of the spore with the Horde of the Spore, what you're going to want to do is go and get the Skeletons from the Skeleton Homestead, go liberate them, save them. Once you do that, then you can bring an army of Skeletons back to the Horde of the Spore and start lighting up their base from the bottom. This is one of the cheesiest ways to defeat a Minecraft faction in the entire game. So naturally, as you defeat the Horde of the Spore, you'll then move on to the Horde of the Bastion, where we use redstone launchers and siege engines and whatever else to destroy them. And following the Horde of the Bastion then, we move on to the Horde of the Hunt, by which point we have access to Warriors. So the Horde of the Hunt is probably going to be the easiest faction that we deal with. And then it's just a case of dealing with the Grey Hog in the final phase. The only other phase that I haven't mentioned is defensive phases. But again, I spoke about these in Invasion phase where... Your defensive phases are just a case of going back and saving your main villages. Don't go out your way to save lesser villages. Don't go out your way to save homesteads. Just focus on your attacks. Focus on sinking bases. Keep your eye on your prismarine. Make sure you're upgrading and you should be fine, honestly. The game isn't that challenging if you know what you're doing and you know how to approach things. Now you have a rough idea of each phase and you know how we're going to structure our adventure and our journey. Let's get into the serious stuff. I'll be uploading videos for how to beat the bosses and I'll also be uploading some videos for some niggly little achievements, uh, miscellaneous jobs. But like I said, the entire guide is found at trueachievements.com. Make sure you go check them out, level up your game score today. You can track your achievements and everything. It's great. But yeah, I'll catch you later. Have a good one.